Native DOS gaming has finally got sound, thanks to the new Sound Blaster emulator that bridges the gap between free DOS and the more modern sound hardware. So, let's turn a simple USB drive into a fully portable DOS gaming PC. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. A while back I made a video on turning an old laptop into a DOS gaming machine and we were using a native DOS running on there um, using a package called FreeDOS. Now that all worked fine as regards getting the software up and running but we weren't able to add any sound so that really in effect made the project fail in terms of making a retro gaming PC. But since then, um, there has been a package launch called SBEMU, which is a Sound Blaster emulation card for um, FreeDOS, which should connect the new, or, or at least newer hardware, a sound hardware, up with FreeDOS, allowing you to play then retro games with sound. So I thought I'd revisit that project and see if we can just revamp it a bit um, in, in two ways. One, of course, is to add in our Sound Blaster emulation to see if we can actually get sound into our games. And also then to have a look at making this a portable drive so that we can create a, a bootable USB drive, which we can just really take up to any computer we want and then instantly boot from that drive and turn that into then a retro DOS gaming PC. So let's have a look and see how we get all of this set up. So to start with then, let's just confirm um, exactly what we're gonna be doing here. Um, so the idea is to create a native DOS gaming PC. Uh, and for that, we're, I'm gonna be using um, two bits of old hardware here. So again, the idea is that we can take uh, pretty much a, a, a scrap piece of hardware and turn that into a pretty powerful DOS game PC. So I've got my old um, EPC, which is an Intel Atom powered device, um, which I used in my previous video. And I'm also then going to have a bit of a play around with this old Hewlett Packard um, PC here. So this is an Intel Core 2 Duo PC, um, which has just been sat under my desk for a number of years, just gathering dust. So we can take our, our old hardware and turn that into then a dedicated DOS gaming PC. And, and anything sort of post 2000 will, will actually create a very high end DOS gaming PC, especially since we are running it as a native DOS, so we don't have any emulation layers to get in the way. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be looking at today, um, which is a little bit different, is I'm, you, you can, of course, install FreeDOS onto the hard drive in the actual PC. And, and that is fine, but that of course does mean that this bit of hardware then becomes um, a, a dedicated to, to your DOS system. Uh, I've been playing around with my little laptop here and, it's, and I'm quite happy with the way that that's set up using Linux, so I don't particularly want to overwrite that. But it would be nice to have a play with it um, as a DOS machine. So what we're going to do, um, mostly in this video, I, I will show you the hard drive installation side as well, but mostly what we're going to do is aim at producing a little USB stick. Uh, and this one here is a bootable um, hard drive that has a complete DOS gaming PC in that. Uh, and that again, that's based on free DOS, so we will have a native DOS gaming PC. Uh, and this of course then emulates the main hard drive for that PC. So we should be able to simply just take this up to either one of our um, old computers or, or perhaps a new computer, simply plug that in and instantly have a, a native DOS gaming PC with all of the games and everything on here. Um, so we're gonna be looking at how we can actually use the full size of, of this USB drive as well. So that's what we're gonna be aiming for. So let's download some software and get started. So to get this portable USB boot drive set up, we're going to need a few bits of software. So first off, we will need FreeDOS itself. So if you head across to freedos.org, if we scroll down here, and we can go to the download section. Now there are a range of downloads um, that you can use to install FreeDOS. Um, and again, if you're installing it onto an actual PC, then you can use these CDs and, and so on. 
but we're going to be creating a bootable USB drive. So we're going to download the full USB um, in installation software here. So if we click on that, we can then just simply download that onto our PC ready for us to use. Now the image that we're downloading um, from FreeDOS is really the installation disk. So it is a bootable um, USB drive image, but it does format your USB drive to a 512 megabyte hard drive. And we, and we can of course then use that to run our FreeDOS as, as a live USB stick. But of course, um, whatever um, size USB stick you use, you are going to lose all of the extra space. And we're just simply limited then to 512 megabytes. And the actual installation disk itself takes up about 300 megabytes, which only leaves us a couple of hundred then for any games that we're going to install. And of course, that's, that just doesn't become usable as, as an actual full DOS gaming computer. So we need a way of getting around this 512 megabytes limit, limit. And we're going to have to do that by building our own bootable drive and then rebuilding the free DOS system onto that. Now, now to build our bootable drive, we're going to use a package called Rufus. So again, if, if you go to um, rufus.ie, um, and th th this is a, a very handy package which lets you sort of play around with bootable USB drives and, and so on. And, and we simply need to download that application as well onto our PC. So if you scroll down that home page, you'll see the download link and just simply then download that and, and save it onto your computer. Now, what's going to happen here is that Rufus is going to allow us to make a, a completely blank bootable USB drive. We'll then want to be able to copy across the software from the USB image that we've downloaded from FreeDOS. Now, that, of course, is going to be all packaged up inside an image file. And we need something to be able to open that. So I'm going to use a package called 7-Zip for that. So if you head across to 7zip.org, you'll see that there are download um, links here. So you just need to download the software from 7zip, and that has to be then installed onto your computer. So, so just download that, run the installation um, software, and install that onto your computer. And then your computer will be able to open up these um, USB um, boot images, and we can then copy some files out of it. So the very last thing then, um, as I mentioned, the, the brand new thing out for FreeDOS is the ability to emulate uh, a Sound Blaster card. So if we go across to this web address here, and again, all of these links I'll put in the description um, in the video down below. So just have a look in there and head across. So again, this is um, a piece of software that bridges the gap between FreeDOS and the DOS systems, which very much were based around Sound Blaster cards. Um, the newer um, sound hardware inside more modern PCs, and again, by more modern, I'm, I'm talking here sort of post 2000 uh, and so on. Um, this bit of software then actually links the Sound Blaster that FreeDOS expects to see, and it links it up then with the new hardware to allow the FreeDOS to play sound. So to get hold of the software then, um, we need to go into this tag area here. Um, and inside there, we'll see there's a set of um, releases coming out. So we want to go to the latest release. So for me, um, making this in May 23, um, it was still in beta version, um, but it is still pretty um, handy to, it, it does do a lot of emulation and it still works really well. Um, I'm assuming that over the next few months, this will get better and better. Uh, and we just simply then want to download the ready packaged um, version here. Um, so again, you, you can, if you want, um, build your own um, version of it from source code, but it's much, much easier than just to simply take this version and use that. So again, we simply download that and save it into our hard drive. And that really gets us everything that we need to build our portable um, USB hard drive for our DOS gaming machine. So moving into our files that we've just downloaded then. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is we're actually going to make a bootable USB drive. So whatever um, USB stick that you're going to use, uh, make sure you have that then plugged into your computer. And we can then start up Rufus. OK, so Rufus has a little um, dialogue here. And I can see here that we are looking at our flash drive. So again, if, if yours isn't showing there, just simply select it from that selection. We then need to tell it how we want to format this. So in the boot selection then, you'll see that there is an option for free DOS, and that will allow us to download a version. Now, all, all this is going to do is to download the very, very basic files that we need to create a bootable hard drive. So it will just give us the basic free, um, free DOS um, boot system. Um, so it, um, we, we can just simply download that from, from directly from the website. So again, we then want to label our USB drive. So I've just labeled mine as free DOS. We then want to tell it what file system that we're going to use on here. So um, we want to use an FAT32 file system and we want to set our cluster sizes up to the largest 32 kilobytes. And that will just make sure that our system is able to use um, pretty much all of the USB drive that you put in there. So again, some, some modern USB drives obviously are, are very, very large. Um, our, our DOS system can't handle the extremely large disks, um, but anything up to, I think it's around about 32 gigabytes, it will be able to use, um, especially if you have it set with these um, cluster sizes and so on. So just um, set it to that. And I, my um, drive that I have at the moment, as I say, it's a four gigabyte drive. So what will happen here is that um, Rufus will simply um, use the full four gigabytes for this boot drive. So once you've done that, um, just um, leave these options as, as, as they are. Um, we can then just simply click start and that will take just a few seconds to go and um, create that drive. Um, obviously, we are formatted, doing a low level format on this USB drive. So anything that you do have on there is going to be destroyed. But obviously that's what we're planning on doing anyway. So just click OK. And you'll see that that then will just trundle through. Uh, and very quickly, we now have a bootable USB drive. So if we close off um, our Rufus. So this drive that we've created is now, in effect, a completely blank but bootable um, hard drive. So the image that we downloaded from FreeDOS contains lots of software uh, and setup systems that will create a, an actual um, proper DOS PC for us. So we need to copy that information from the image we've downloaded onto our clean bootable USB image. And again, because we've now created it as, in my instance, a four gigabyte hard drive, that will then give me space for building up my gaming machine. So this is the image that we downloaded. So I need to extract that. So if I just extract that then onto this area, let that trundle through. Okay. So we have now, if I open that up, you'll see inside there that we have a few files um, that are, are the actual installation media. Uh, and this image file then is the one which we actually want to work with. So if, if I have installed my 7-zip, if I right click on that, I can now use my 7-zip menu and I can actually open that archive. And there we can see that I have all of my free DOS um, information in that. So I need to copy that information onto my um, bootable USB drive. So I'm gonna select everything to begin with. Now there are a couple of bits here which obviously are already on the USB drive um, that are part of the, the boot system. So I don't, and again, I'm using control here to, to deselect certain things. So I don't want command.com and I don't want kernel.sys. Okay, so, so those are low level parts of DOS uh, and those are already on the, on the hard drive um, and we don't want to do that. So I'm gonna copy those then onto my um, hard drive, onto my USB drive. So let's um, come on here 
Now let's copy that onto my USB drive, which is the FreeDOS drive, and OK that. So once those files have copied across, the last bit of software that we need to put onto our hard drive is the Sound Blaster emulation software. So if we open up the um, zip file that we downloaded and go through that, we'll see that we actually come to the actual files that we need. So I'm simply going to um, highlight those and then drag them onto my FreeDOS hard drive. So once those have gotten across, if we then jump onto our USB stick, we'll see that we have all the files that we need now to turn this into our portable DOS gaming PC. Now it is at this point where if you do want to install this directly onto your hard drive, you can take this USB stick, plug it in, boot up from it, and it will automatically offer you the option to um, copy all the files across and format and set up your hard drive. Now, once you've got that set up, um, then you can really follow through the same procedure that we're using here to edit the files and then install the um, SBEMU software. And if you do want to edit files in your, in your DOS system, just use the edit command followed by the file name, and that will open up a little DOS editor for you. But obviously, we're going to now continue on creating this bootable um, USB drive. So let's get um, going on with that then. Now, there are a few things that we do need to set up. So we the f USB image that we downloaded from the FreeDOS website is, as I said, it's designed to be an installation media um, boot drive. So first thing to do is to make sure that it doesn't keep trying to install itself onto our computer's hard drive. And the easiest way to do that is um, Free, the FreeDOS system will look for this file called setup.bat and if it finds that, it will then run it and that will do the installation. So we simply need to um, rename that file. And if I just rename it with an underscore at the beginning, that leaves the file on there so that if we ever do want to use this to install FreeDOS somewhere, we, we, we can do. But by putting underscore, that means that as soon as FreeDOS starts up, it will, it will not find the setup.bat file and it will therefore just drop straight into DOS and we can then use it as our gaming machine. Now, if you have ever messed around with DOS before, um, you will know that there is a config.sys file and an autoexec.bat file, which um, are the two files that tell the system how to set up various device drivers uh, and various bits of code to run as you boot up. So we are gonna have to play around with those. Um, and that will, of course, allow us to load in our um, various bits of Sound Blaster software and so on. Now, as part of the Sound Blaster, the SBEMU software that we downloaded, there is a README text here, and that contains some information on, on how um, it needs to be set up to uh, load um, in our DOS machine. So if I just um, put that over to here. We can see here that it um, is telling us to put something inside the config.sys file and then to run a number of commands. So really what we need to do is we need to put this into our config.sys file, this um, device driver, and then we're going to add these command line um, commands into our autoexec file so that they will automatically be executed when we boot up. So let's have a look at how we do that. So instead of a config.sys file, FreeDOS uses this fdconfig.sys file. So we need to edit that. So if I right click on that, and um, open it with, and it should have an option for notepad on here. So open that up. So we now have our um, config.sys file here. If I just pull back up the um, SBEMU stuff. So we're gonna be using this thing called gemx.exe, and that is a memory manager for DOS. Now in FreeDOS, it uses this highmemx.exe file, and that um, would be in conflict with the one that we need to use. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take out, 
we're going to copy across that that um, command, and we're going to put that on top of the one in here. Uh, and I am also then going to put a forward slash in in there, and that will just make sure that it will use the gemx.exe file, which it will find in the root of our hard drive. The rest of it then, of course, um, will be fine, and that will just continue then the setup for the FreeDOS system. So let's just save that and come out of that one. So we now need to edit our autoexec.bat file. So if I right click on that, um, I should have an edit option here, which will open up Notepad automatically. And again, let me just um, pull back up our um, SBEMU commands in here. Now there is, um, quite a lot of code going on inside this autoexec.bat file. A lot of it is just really just setting up various bits and pieces um, and, uh, and getting that up and running for our computer. And we, and we need to leave most of that in. Uh, really what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down near the bottom here and we can see that we have our test here for our um, setup. So we're saying here, if our setup.bat file does not exist, then it's going to run this setup system here. Um, so we, we can just we can just leave that in there if we want to. What we then have is we have it coming down to here, it prints up a couple of messages. Um, what we want to do then is after it's finished completely setting up the system, we want then to run our SBEMU code. So I'm just simply going to copy these lines of code across into our um, autoexec.bat file. Oh. We just do that. Uh, he says. And then I'm going to save that file. And we should now have our system ready to go. Um, so let's have a look. Let me just close that down here first. What I'm going to do as well at the moment then is I'm going to start building up some sort of games that we can start playing about with. Now, what will usually happen here, so we, the way we've got to think about this is that this USB drive is in effect going to be our hard drive in our DOS gaming computer. Now, usually what you would be doing is adding in some floppy drives to load in software and so on. But what we're going to do is we're going to load the floppy drive images and, and the um, game images into a folder on this drive. And then we're going to get them to install onto the hard drive after that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new folder. Let's just create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder disks. And inside that, I'm then going to put the installation media for the various games that I'm going to use. So let's, of course, um, the one that they always want to try and use here is Doom. And again, I am selecting Doom because I know that that is compatible with the um, Sound Blaster emulator. Um, there are a number of games that won't work. So let, let's just make sure that we pick one that does actually work. So let me go and find um, some games to put across into here. So um, I will have those in my folder in here somewhere. And if we come into, uh, there should be a folder called DOS, okay. So we have a, a Doom game here. So I'm just simply gonna copy that across into my um, FreeDOS one, into my disks folder. I'm just gonna copy it in there, okay. So in effect, I now have on my FreeDOS system, I have my disks folder. Inside there, there is Doom. And inside that folder then is the actual installation media for Doom. Okay, so we should now be ready to take this USB drive to a computer and then turn that computer instantly into a DOS gaming machine. So let's go and try that out um, right now. So I've plugged the USB drive into my Hewlett Packard machine and I'm turning that on. Now, when we first turn on, we do get this boot screen and you will find on there there are certain buttons which allow you to select which drive you want to boot from. Um, so on mine, I've got F9, which will bring up a boot menu. Um, or if you haven't got that, then F10 will take you into the main setup and you're looking for your boot order um, settings. And then select in there, make sure that you're booting from your USB drive first. And that, of course, then means that as we power on the computer, it's now going to use our plug-in USB drive as its boot drive. 
So as the system boots up, you'll find it then booting into FreeDOS. And again, that's coming then from our little USB drive. And eventually it will go through and get it all loaded up. And the last thing you'll see is it loads in our Sound Blaster emulation. And that will come up with some information that we do need to make note of. So we have there our um, Sound Blaster address, IRQ number and DMA channel. And also then our emulation port, um, so that's 388 hex. And we do need to make note of that as that will be asked for by certain bits of software and games that we want to run. Now one of the things that first caught me out when I was doing this was that as I booted up, I actually got an error at the end of the boot sequence where it said that it didn't recognize my sound card. Now, um, what it turned out was on this machine was that the actual hardware for sound had not been enabled in the BIOS settings. So what I really needed to do there was to go back into BIOS and then go across and find my um, PCI devices and in that area there, re-enable my hardware um, for my audio. And again, just making sure that I select an IRQ number that doesn't conflict then with any other devices in the system. After that was set up, rebooting then of course gave me back and I was able to then use the sound. So now that we've got this up and running, we do need to do a little bit of tidying up. So um, if we do a dir command, which lets us see what files there are in this root folder, um, you'll see that we have an autoexec.bat file and a config.sys file. And those are the sort of the pure DOS versions. Of course, we want to make sure that we're using the um, free DOS versions. So although we, we don't necessarily need to do this, but I just do like to just remove those. So using the del command, we can delete our autoexec.bat file and our config.sys file. And that just makes sure that we're just clean in this, in this folder with our free DOS system. And once I've done that, I'm then just going to reboot just to make sure that we're all settled down and as we want it. So let's now go and see if we can get this sound working and we'll go and have a look and see if we can play that game we loaded. So let's go and find Doom. So we can use our CD command to move between our folders. So if we CD into our disks folder and then if we CD into our Doom folder, we can do a directory listing for this file and we'll see that we have an install.bat file that if we run will initiate the installation of Doom. So we need to select our drive C, which is our main drive, our Doom folder, and then that will then create that onto our USB drive. And again, remember our USB drive is our main drive C of our PC, so we don't need to use anything to do with the actual hard drive in the machine. Now at the moment, we don't yet have a mouse set up. We'll look at that later. So on our next screen that comes up, we do need to select keyboard only. And then we need to tell the system that we're using a Sound Blaster card for both our sound play, our music playback and our sound effects. And you'll see it will ask us then for the port number for that, which of course is the 220 that we had before. It will then go through and then start to ask us for the IRQ number, our DMA channel, and finally the number of sound channels that we're actually using. So just really that should all be the default settings. We can then save those and then boot into Doom. And there we have Doom coming up with full DOS based sound. Um, so again, that is what we did not have before. Um, we used to have to play Doom with total silence. And of course, the, the whole atmospheric feel of Doom is very much enhanced by the both the background track and of course all of the sound effects and, and mad screaming um, behind people. So again, that now gives us our, our full DOS gaming PC with sound. So now that we've got a working DOS gaming machine, um, we can really start to customize our setup to get it working just the way we want. Now, one of the first things I would advise you do is to add some mouse support. So at the moment, our system um, does not actually have a mouse driver installed. Now there is one that comes within the FreeDOS package. So if we go into packages and into base, you'll see that there is a package in there called CT, CT Mouse, which at the current 
um, time is, is zipped up in this archive folder. Um, so what we need to do is we need to extract the files out of that and then load that CT mouse driver. That will give us access then to PS2 mouse support. Um, but by default, the USB mice, um, we do need to do quite a bit of extra work to get those working, which I'm not going to go through in this tutorial. But we will install this the Qt mouse driver. And if you do have a PS2 mouse, or if your computer does, um, my, my laptop actually, its, it's um, mouse pad it is actually connected up as a PS2 mouse, um, that will work. So let's have a look at this first. So if we open up that archive file, and again, I've just simply re-plugged the USB drive back into my main PC. Inside the bin folder, you'll see there are a, a few files. So we need to copy these then out of this archive so that our DOS machine can have access to them. So I'm just gonna copy those files. I'm gonna go back into my root folder. I'm really just gonna just um, make sure we tight, keep things a bit tidier here. So the um, Sound Blaster stuff, I just loaded that into the root folder. But let's do this next one here, just keeping it a bit tidier. So I'm gonna create a new folder, which I'm going to call Drivers. And then inside that folder, I'm gonna create another new folder called CT Mouse. And then inside that folder, I'm then going to paste my files. Okay, so we now have our CT mouse executable and then some associated files that go with that. So of course we now need to make sure that that gets loaded into our system. So um, we can do this a number of ways. Um, we do need to um, edit our auto um, exec bat file, so this FD auto file. So if we come in and edit that, you can see that it comes down and at the very bottom of this file then that's where we do our sound blaster stuff. So we're gonna load our mouse in at that point. Now we do need to give the system access to our files. And this is where you now need to have a little bit of knowledge about how DOS works. Um, so we can just simply down the bottom here, we can just simply come in here and we know that our, our CT mouse um, executable is in driver, so backslash drivers, backslash CT, mouse backslash ct mouse and that will of course then run that executable and install our mouse driver now if we want to we, we can just simply use um i'm just gonna uh, take that out we can just simply use the ct mouse um, command line but of course the system will not know where to find that so this is where if we want to um, in effect have a number of bits of software which we can just find any time we want by name. We use this thing called a path variable uh, and you may have come across this in, in Windows itself. Um, but we can go in here and we can then simply say I, I want to add the drivers slash CT mouse folder to my path. So our, if, if we type a command in that DOS doesn't recognize, it will have a look and see if it can find that command in any of these folders in our path. So that now should, um, when we come down here, we should have the CT mouse executable being called, and that should then say it doesn't exist in the root folder, so it'll find it then in that CT mouse folder. And that just makes things just a little bit um, easier to see. And of course, if we wanted to, we could start moving all of this stuff into that drivers folder as well, just to keep it out of our root folder. Uh, but well, I'm just going to leave it there for now. So let's just plug this in and then see if that works. So I'm going to make sure I save that. And then we're going to plug that back into our computer. Now I couldn't find a PS2 mouse to plug into my desktop machine. So I'm using my little EPC here. Um, but it does in fact show us then that we can just simply take this USB drive and plug it into any computer and get that then to boot up as a native DOS machine. So at the end of the boot sequence you can see there that our cute mouse has been loaded in. And we can test that out by editing a file using that edit command. So if I edit the fdauto.bat file, you can see in there. And we do now have a little mouse cursor that we can use to access things and, of course, um, access our menus and so on. So that does give us now a, a mouse driver. Uh, again, admittedly, it has to be a PS2 mouse at the moment. Uh, and we can then, of course, um, go off and do our various gaming and so on. So again, showing then that this USB drive does make our system completely portable. 
and we can just simply take it to any PC that we want, uh, any of these old machines as well, plug that in and we do have our full gaming PC. So everything so far has been going really well, but this is very new software and it's not quite there yet with a number of games. So on this one here, I'm trying to run Duke 3D on my Hewlett Packard machine and everything seems to go fine up until the point when the game tries to start. And at that point, it does crash my computer and I wasn't really able to um, work out why that was. Um, to get around it then, I just simply had to move across to my um, little EPC laptop and with exactly the same setup, using exactly the same hard drive, um, Duke 3D ran fine with complete sound and everything. So there are obviously some compatibility issues between machines themselves and it's probably down to various IRQ setups and hardware addresses and so on. So other games then just simply didn't like the Sound Blaster driver being installed. So here Lemmings, the install program just fails as soon as we try to run it. But if I comment out our Sound Blaster lines in the autoexec.bat file, just using the rem statement, and then try and then install Lemmings from there, you'll see that everything runs fine. So, so the drivers themselves just simply seem to be getting in the way of that piece of software from working. So as you can see, um, the software isn't quite there yet, but in terms of what's already been achieved, it, it's pretty amazing to be able to get now our Sound Blaster emulation running directly on our native DOS machine under this free DOS um, environment. So um, do have a look at this. As I say, using a bootable USB stick, I find that's very handy that you can actually then just simply take that up to any PC, any old machine as well boot up into that and have a play with DOS and try to get things working on that computer without having to commit to actually ditching its hard drive and installing a full set of, of free DOS on there. Is this the best way to do PC um, gaming? Um, well again, if you do want to create a, a native DOS machine with an old PC, then yes, um, this is a way to go. But as regards getting access to the games and playing them, I would have to admit that I, I'm still using DOSBox emulation as my main go-to for PC, uh, sorry, sorry, DOS gaming. Uh, and I will then make a video on a complete installation and setup of DOSBox. Um, so, if you have enjoyed this video and if you want to look at the next videos, do please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to let yourself know when all of my new videos are being released. I hope you've enjoyed this one on FreeDOS and the Sound Blaster emulation. So have fun with your retro gaming. I look forward to seeing you again soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.